Okay, thank you for attending this session this afternoon. This session is going to be about uh, the new Google Sites, and we're going to provide you with some basic um, introduction to the new Google Sites. For oh, yeah. people who haven't uh, created one yet or new to creating a new Google Site, or for those of you who uh, have a site and want to try to improve it, and uh, I'll be providing some some best practice tips that you might find helpful uh, for for the session today. All right, so I also will, will be, be providing a, uh, a guide. It's about an 11-page guide that kind of goes through a lot of the stuff that we'll be talking about today so that you can uh, take a look at that at your, at your leisure, okay? So uh, to start off today, we're going to first of all talk about where your Google site lives. And the new Google Sites is actually home based in your Google Drive. So here uh, you see in the screen, hopefully, uh, is the uh, new Google Drive, and uh, or actually the uh, Google Drive, and this is actually the home of the new Google Sites. So my Google Drive is very uh, populated with a bunch of stuff. Okay, but it's important to understand uh, where the new Google Sites is actually based, where the home of the new Google Sites is found. And it's actually found inside your drive area. If you've already created a, a new Google Site and you created it in a different area, such as the area called Sites, it, you're not really, it's not really clear that the website is actually housed inside your Google Drive. And you can actually find it in the Google Drive area. So I'm going to provide you with some tips before we really get us started into the new Google Drive. I'm going to provide you with some tips on basically what I would recommend in setting up your Google Drive in preparation for uh, setting up your new Google site. So what I would recommend is to actually create a, uh, a new folder. So the first thing that I would recommend is to create a folder that's dedicated to your website. You see I've created other folders in the past. To create a folder in your Google Drive, you choose New, and then choose Folder. And so then you would want to name your folder. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just for where you have your website. So I just call it My New Website, and here it is. It's with my other folders in my Google Drive. You're going to use Google Drive for a lot of other things, but one of the things that you'll use Google Drive for is your new Google site. And so I recommend that inside this folder, you create your new Google site, but you also create additional subfolders that will contain the content that you plan to use with your new Google site. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, prior to doing that, it's a very good idea to actually uh, change the permission settings to this folder just to make your life easier going forward. So what I'm going to do is make the change the permission level of this folder because currently the folder is completely private. But since I am planning on putting content that I'm going to post on my website into this folder, then it's going to be uh, important that the folder is not private. So to make this folder public, I'm going to right click on the folder and I'm going to choose share and then I'm going to choose the advanced tab and you can see that this folder is private where only I can access the folder. I'm going to change this to a different level and I'm going to choose the second level where it is going to be public. Anyone who has a link can access. So I'm going to choose a second option rather than the first option. The first option makes it really public so that all of the contents are going to be indexed and can show up on a random Google search to anybody in the world. Well, I don't want to be that public, but I want to make sure that my stuff is not blocked for anybody. And so I want this folder to be public, but not indexed by Google's search engine. And so not discoverable by a search. So when I click Save, you'll notice that and I click Done, you'll notice that my folder now has a little person icon in it, which means that it has been shared to some degree. So I'm going to open this folder here by double-clicking it. And you can see that this is an empty folder, and 
here at the top, you can see that I'm in my drive and I'm inside this new folder that I've just created and it's called my new website. Now, the reason for setting the permission level at the folder is that anytime I add anything in this folder, whether I create new folders or whether I just add images or documents, those images and documents and folders will inherit that same level of permissions. And that's gonna save me a lot of time, so I don't have to do that for everything that I put into the folder. If I didn't set that permission level on the main folder, then the contents inside here wouldn't inherit that level of permissions, and I would have to do that for each individual item that I put inside this folder. And since this folder is, in, is I'm anticipating using this folder for my website, and everything on my website is by nature public, then that's really what I want it to be public. And so I want to be careful not to put stuff in my website folder that I don't, intend, that I, I don't intend to be completely public. So inside this website folder, before we make our website, I would recommend creating additional folders to store your website content. So I'm just going to create some mock folders. I'm going to create a folder inside this new website folder, and we'll call this documents. You, and again, I'm just making this up. And you'll notice that this folder has a little person icon in it. That shows you that it has inherited that same level of permissions that the main level folder has. And so I'm going to make another folder that I'll call images. And I'm just going to organize the content that I plan on putting into my website. I recommend that you develop your own organization system that makes sense to you. Okay, we all have our different way of organizing things. And so I would recommend that you just organize things based on a, an organizational system that makes sense to you. You may want to extend this. Perhaps you may want to have a folder that would say, uh, maybe a folder inside documents that says 2019-20. That way, that way, year by year, you can archive stuff. Same thing with images. Or maybe you want to have a main folder that has 2019-20, and inside there have a folder called documents and images. So really, it depends on what you want. Uh, I'm just doing this for training purposes, just to show you. But I'm going to take and add some fake content to these two folders just so that we can have something to work with. Because when I create the website in a few minutes, and when you create your website, you want to already have some content uh, ready to add to your website. Uh, you can't just, you know, make a website and just, you know, it'd be ready to go. You have to have content. You've got to think about that content that you need to have for your website. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, in my, I've got some fake uh, stuff here that I'll add. So um, expand this and I've got some documents here. I'm just going to take these documents and I'll move them right here into that folder. And then I've got some images. I'm just going to select them all drag them into my images folder. So now uh, my, my new website folder, I've got documents and images, and I just added some documents just so that you can see how that works. And see, I've got my images folder here, and I've added some images there, just so that when the time comes that I create the website, and we work with images and documents, you kind of see how that works, okay? So I've got my folder. I've got some subfolders that contain some content that I'm going to add to my website. And now I am finally ready to start to create my website. So to create your website inside Drive, what you want to do is click the New option. And then you would choose More. And then you would choose Google Sites. Now, I get this warning because I'm creating this site in a folder that has been shared, uh, but I haven't shared it with anybody to have editing rights. And so this is just viewing rights. And my website is going to be public at, uh, at some point. So I'm just going to just choose Create and Share. Okay. Now, when I choose Create and Share, it's going to create that website for me 
automatically uh, to begin with. So let's take some time to go over kind of uh, some of the basics and the admin area of your site. And then we'll actually add some content to your site and show you how to do that. All right, first thing that we'll see is that this is called Untitled Site, which is kind of a, a weird name for it. Um, I will point out that this top bar here and this sidebar here are only available in the admin options. And so this is basically what you see as the admin of your site. This sidebar and top bar, we'll talk about that and what those, what the various functions are here and some best practices. And um, so what people will see is basically what's to the left of the sidebar and what's below the top bar. So this area here is a kind of a visual, uh, an approximation of what your website will look like. And so when I create a website, Google will create a page one welcome page for the website. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about the top bar here. And first of all, this untitled site area. Before I do that, let's go back to our Google Drive folder. When I go back to my Google Drive folder, you can see here is where my website is going to be located. It's inside this folder that I created. And right now it's called Untitled Site. I'm going to give it a name because Untitled Site just sounds too uh, weird. So I'll give it a proper name for it, but that's just the name of the file, uh, the name of the site. It's not going to appear on the website anywhere. So I'm showing you this because this is where I recommend that you would persistently come to edit your website. You would come to your drive area and open up your My New Website folder, and then there's where you would access your website. Um, you can access it through the other area, the Google Sites area, but accessing it through the Google Sites area, you kind of lose sight of the fact of exactly where your website home is. It's actually found inside Drive. Even if you haven't looked at it that way before, uh, your website is located inside your Google Drive. And it's good to know that. I've had probably uh, over, this, over last year about a dozen teachers who called me and said their site has suddenly disappeared. And the way it happened was they didn't realize their site was in Drive. They were accessing it through the sites area. And then one day where they were cleaning their drive out and they deleted their website because they didn't know that it was anything useful. And so I had to, and to solve it, you just go in and restore it from the recycle bin. It's an easy fix, but it's a little frustrating. You don't, that won't happen if you understand that your home is actually in your drive and that you come to edit your site from within your drive. So I'm going to go back to my site here. I'm going to change this from untitled site. I'm just going to call it my website. Okay, now when I change the name here and just click away, notice it will reproduce the name on the page itself. You may or may not want to keep that name there. Uh, you can just delete that name if you want to delete that name. Totally up to you. Uh, you can change it to something different if you want to, or you can just leave it blank. Okay? So that's just something to kind of keep in mind here. Um, so we'll get into the other areas here, but if we go back to our Google Drive, you'll see that now the untitled site was actually changed to the name that I give it, my website. So if I actually close my website, I come back to my drive, I go down to my folder that I created for my website. That's my new website. I can see there's my website. I open this back up and I can pick up with where I've left off with my website. Okay. So that's just a way of managing that I think uh, that would be very useful uh, for you to adopt. Okay. Let's talk about this top bar here very quickly. As, you will, as we go across this top bar, this is just only viewable to you as the admin. Uh, this first button is the undo, which basically is like the white out of the web. You make a mistake, then you can undo it. Uh, a redo is whenever you undo something and you want it back, it'll actually bring it back. 
This option here is very useful because it will preview your website in various screen sizes. So if I click on this, uh, it will actually give me these options here where I can say, what does my website look like on a mobile phone? What does it look like on a tablet? What does it look like on a desktop? And so you get all three of those options. This is something new, report a problem. That's new, but I'm gonna go ahead and click this blue X here, which closes it and brings me back to where I was. And so this option here enables you to see your website on different devices. Um, this link option is available for you to get a copy of the link to your page. You can't get that until you publish a site. We'll talk about that toward the end of the session today. If you are technically challenged and you have some really good friends who are geeky, you can actually add them as editors to your site and have them help you. Uh, you can pay them money to have them help you if you can afford to do so. Uh, but you can add people to contribute to, to editing your site by using this plus person icon. You have some advanced things here. I'm not going to take time to go over today, but those are kind of advanced settings that you can look at at your leisure. And then here is the publish button. We'll look at that later on. Uh, and again, I have all of this in a guide that I'll be providing a, a handout to you, a digital handout that I'll be providing to you as well that has all of this information with screen captures as well. Now let's take a look at the side box area, the sidebar. Uh, in the sidebar, you have three tabs here. You have an insert tab, which is showing by default. Then you have a pages tab, which you can activate by clicking on it. And then you have a themes tab. So we're gonna start with the insert tab and we'll talk about uh, all of those, uh, all of these tabs here as uh, as we have time okay uh first thing we want to do is look at this insert tab and we'll look at these main four options uh, a text box you can insert a obviously a text box here's where you insert images you can insert html embedded code like if you get an embed code from the website you can get that copy that embed code in or insert that embed code right into your page and from Drive, this is a very important area because again, I recommend that you put all of your content for your website into this Google Drive folder that you anticipate adding to your website. That makes it easy for you to manage and so you know where everything is and you've got everything organized. That's just a good way of, uh, of managing, okay? So, um, then you have this layouts area. I haven't used this very much, but uh, if you don't, are you, if you're unsure of how to make a layout your, from scratch, then you can get a predefined, some of these predefined layouts. There are six uh, options. Uh, this is a picture with a text, a header text and a, and a paragraph text. Here you have two pictures with the headings and text. Three pictures with headings and text. Or you have three pictures, two smaller ones, one legend. So you have these layout options that you can actually use as a starting point if you want to have a, a starting point to use for that. Then you have some other options down here that you can insert a table of contents, which I've never used. Some of you might prefer using that. I haven't found much of a use for that. The navigation is uh, sufficient for that, but if you have a very long page, you can have a table of contents that links to documents further down the page. An image carousel, this is a new feature that just came out uh, earlier this year. You can add buttons, you can add a divider, you can add YouTube uh, videos, you can add a calendar, a map, you can add a doc, slide, sheets, forms, and charts. So obviously we're not going to talk about all of those things. I'll talk about some of the basics of these, uh, and that's really about it, okay? Briefly, I'm gonna go over the uh, pages area. So when I click on the pages area, you can see that I have one page, and that's this home page. Uh, and later on, we'll talk about how to add more pages, and then how to manage those pages, okay? So, um, you also, whenever you add a page, you've got some options here that you can do with that page. If I have time, we'll talk about that. 
So as you add pages, they will begin to accumulate here uh, on this under this tab called Pages. The last tab here is called Themes. You can see the default theme that's given whenever you create a new Google site is called a simple theme. And it's just a simple, basic theme. The themes will provide you with kind of a color motif that will go along with your site. Uh, the default color here is blue. You can change it to a different color or you can choose your own color. And that color will show up as like headings and they will affect hyperlinks and sometimes they can affect the navigation. It really kind of depends. And then you also have some font options. You do not have the ability to choose a particular font, but you have the ability within a theme to choose from three different fonts. So um, if we look at different themes, you can see you have different colors and different font styles. And so, and notice the behavior looks a little different as well. And so each theme behaves slightly differently and has different, uh, has, you know, some different look and feel, different look and feel uh, to it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this um, because we want to focus on the most important thing is the content. Uh, any one of these really will make your site look nice and clean and good out of the box. And so the look and feel of your site is very easy to accomplish with the new Google Sites. As a matter of fact, it's very difficult to create an ugly new Google Site. It is not impossible to do. I have seen some people who have been able to create ugly new Google Sites, and that's because they put their fingerprints all over it and they try to do things that they don't need to do. So I would say choose a theme, don't worry about the, you know, the font, choose a theme and font you like, and then go with the content and then don't worry about it. Let the theme itself control the overall look and feel of your page. Okay, so that's all with those three tabs there that uh, I want to talk about. Um, so, any questions? Okay. All right, so now let's talk about our front page here. I'm going to go back to the Insert tab, scroll back up so we can see the Insert tab here. And what we want to do is to start talking about the front page here. Uh, your front page is actually your most important page. Your front page is your welcome mat. Your front page is the first impression. Your front page is actually sometimes the very first place that a parent will meet their child's teacher. And so it's pretty important uh, to have a good first page. So some things I would recommend about your front page, and I have these, by the way, in notes that I'm going to be providing for you afterward. So you don't have to write this down. I'm going to be providing this for you so that you can uh, uh, you can refer to it. So. Uh, your front page should not have things on it that are static. By static, I mean things that don't change a lot, that stay the same all the time. So, for example, uh, one thing that a lot of teachers have is their schedule. You know, really big section where they've got their schedule. Is your schedule important? Yes, it is important. Does it change very much during the year? Probably not. So it's taking up your front page area and it's providing a static part of your front page. So what I would recommend is create a link called My Schedule. And on that, on that or create a page called My Schedule. And on that page, put your schedule. So it's inside. It's a static page. Your front page really shouldn't have static content, a lot of static content. You know, certainly you, you may have some, but you want to have stuff on your front page that's just not going to be stationary and unchanging. Another example would be your mission statement or your school's mission statement. Again, your mission statement is very important, uh, but does it change a lot? No, it does not change a lot. It's static. It stays the same. Chances are it's not going to change during the year. And so 
having a, like a huge area where you've got your mission statement right there on your front page, it's not going to change. Okay. Also, a picture, like a picture of your school on your front page or a picture of your school's mascot taking up a huge part of your page. Those are things that are not static. So what does that mean to a visitor? A visitor comes to your front page, they see your mission statement, they see your schedule, they see a picture of your school. They come back a month later, same thing. Two months later, same thing. Even though you've been building a lot of stuff on the internal pages, the message that's conveyed to them on your front page is, this is stale. This is not fresh. So my recommendation is to have those static content things on internal pages and not on your front page. So what should you have on your front page? I would recommend having, having things that, that do change. And I would recommend that you spend the majority of your time on your front page and have the static things, things that don't change as internal pages. So that when people come to your page, they see something new, something fresh each time they come. And that's going to encourage them to come back. And that's going to also keep them from getting a sense of staleness from your site. Okay? So what are some things that we can add? Uh, some things for you to think about would be a calendar. Okay? So having a calendar, especially a list of upcoming events on your page, is something I recommend to think about unless you don't use the calendar, but I would recommend that you use the calendar parent because you want to make a website, uh, you want to provide content on the website that parents really want to know. So if I'm a parent, I really would be interested in uh, what's going on in my, my child's teachers, in my child's classroom for this year. And so I would recommend having a calendar that has uh, upcoming events that you're doing in your class and use that calendar to communicate that uh, to them. Uh, several advantages of using a calendar is that once you put it in the page itself, then you totally manage that area separate from your website. You just add something to your calendar and it shows up on your website. Secondly, a parent can subscribe to the calendar, which means that if the calendar is updated, they can be notified if they choose to uh, set up notifications. Okay, so that's one thing I would recommend for you to think about. Now, it may not be something that you particularly use, and so that wouldn't be useful. But an another thing to consider would be uh, a Google slide. Uh, you, can easily, you can easily add a Google slide right into your page. So you create the slide. I would recommend creating the slide inside your Google Drive. And the cool thing about a Google Slider is that you can add all kinds of stuff to that slider. And then once you embed that Google Slide into your page, that slider will rotate. And you can put a lot of content in a Google Slide. You can put announcements. You can put text. You can combine text with pictures. You can have links. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with Google Slides. Okay, so again, something to think about. Another thing that, that you might want to think about is an image carousel. Uh, this is something new. Uh, if I have time, I'll show you this, uh, but it's fairly simple to use. You click it and you have the ability to bring in uh, images that will rotate through um, for, for people. And that's kind of an exciting thing to have images. Now, again, I would recommend changing it regularly so that the same images aren't going through. But if you do a lot of a lot of activities in your classroom and you take pictures, uh, then this is a really good way to promote those pictures. Uh, because the website, you know, for you as a teacher, you need to look at the website as not something that you have to do, but something as uh, an opportunity. It, it's a way to uh, showcase what's going on in your classroom uh, professionally. So it's very powerful to communicate that. And you do that with, with, with pictures, you know, videos, and other things like that. Um, you can also embed Google uh, Drive folders. And again, if time permits, I'll show you how to do that because that's a really effective way to make a, uh, 
something like a, a photo gallery and also a uh, document depository. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to say about your front page. You want to make it fresh and you want to add content that is changing regularly and doesn't become stale. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the page and let's talk about this top, uh, the top portion of the page. This is called the header area. And the header area, you've got this uh, default title that's there. Um, you'll notice that what's missing in the new Google Sites is a Microsoft Word like menu option. You don't have that Microsoft Word menu option that we all love and find great comfort in. But what's really cool about the new Google Sites is that the menus are only, uh, they're, they only relate to the area that uh, you're dealing with. For example, uh, if I click on the title, notice this menu pop, uh, pops up automatically with options that I, I have. And I can just make uh, changes to those options as I want. I'm just going to put just something here, Mr. Simmons. Uh, I'm going to grab these little things here called sidebar thingies. I'm not sure if that's the actual term for it, but that's what they ought to be called. Um, and so now I've stretched it out so that my text fits all together now. Notice again that I just click inside there and the menu pops right up. And the menu that's specifically uh, designed for this uh, object. Uh, notice when I mouse up here, I have an option to put a name up here. I also have an option to add a logo. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but you can see on the district website, if we actually take a look at the district website, the published version of it, you can see there's the name and there's the logo. So kind of how it's going to look if you actually added uh, a name and logo, it's in a kind of parallel with your navigation. Okay, so let's get back to where I was. All right, so that is there. I'm going to leave both of those blank for the time being. And let's get down to this area here where we can change the header type and we can also change the image. Okay, so the header type is basically the type of header up here at the top. When I click on that, I can see that the default header type is banner. And I recommend that you just stick with that to start with. Um, uh, you can choose to not have a banner at all and just have only text. You can have a very large banner if you like to irritate people by making them scroll way down your page to get to your content. And if you really want to irritate people, you can make it really very, a really large banner area with a big picture that people will have to scroll really far down to get to your content. So it's kind of up to you. I would recommend starting off with the banner. And then if you're a designer, you can go to these other areas too if you want to play with that. All right, so that's the header type, okay? Banner is the default. I'm going to leave it in this case as the default. If there's an image that's here. Uh, we're going to change the image by choosing the change image option. Uh, I recommend that you never use this upload option because it will upload an image for your banner, but it uploads it to a place that uh, airy fairy land, which I have no idea where it goes. And you would have no idea where it goes. You would think that it would go to your Google Drive, but it doesn't. It just goes somewhere. Uh, and it's kind of out of your control because you can't find it. Okay. So I don't recommend using that. I recommend using this select image. So when you do choose select image, you've got some really cool things in the gallery. And I recommend just choosing, you know, is something from the gallery to, to start with, uh, just to keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna just choose that one right there and click select. You'll notice these little star thingies will start moving around, sparkling. What's happening is that the image is adjusting uh, its opacity to make sure the text is gonna be readable. And it will adjust the contrast between the image and the text color so that the text is going to be nice and readable on top of the, the image because very often text on top of image is uh, on top of images is problematic and so even if you put your own image up here google will automatically make adjustments by using this 
a little automatic functionality to make the text readable, okay? And so now that I've got my image, I am ready to go. I will tell you that once you create an image on your front page, that subsequent pages that you create will inherit that same image. And so it's probably, you want to think about having that uh, image, uh, think about the image that you want and deciding upon it before you really start making a lot of pages to begin with, okay? All right, any questions about the header area? I've kind of gone quickly through that, uh, but time is moving on, and we need to kind of get through some other things as well. All right, so that's pretty much the heading area. Now this area down here, this large white area, is gonna be your content area. This is where, when you choose it on something to insert, this is where it's gonna go. It's gonna go down here into this area, and right now there's nothing here at all. Okay, so I'm gonna add a text box, okay? And I'm gonna come up here to the insert tab where it says text box. I'm just gonna click text box and notice that it will add a text box. Notice when it adds a text box, it also adds this, this whole horizontal area here. This whole thing here is called a section, okay? And the section kind of stays together, okay? Um, so the text box, notice if I click away and I click back in the text box, this is the text box menu. This menu applies only to this text box. And so I, get, I activate the menu by clicking in the text box and then I can get some options. So what I'm gonna do is try to just copy some text here. Oops. Just for purposes, I'll come back to the website and paste that text here. And it's just for purposes, and then I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to put something like heading, you know, one, whatever. And so let's just say I've got some text to work with. Um, so some options here. Notice that at the, the normal text or the text options I have, I can have title. Now, title is the same thing as we have up here in the header. So I do not recommend using title ever for any place on the page itself because we don't want it to compete against the, uh, the title of your website, uh, the heading of your website. But you do have this area called heading and subheading and then small. Normal text is really what you wanna use for normal text, okay? So let's say I want this to be a heading uh, and because it is a heading, it's really a good idea to select that heading and not choose bold. Okay, because it's really not bold, it's actually a heading. And so I want to actually assign it to be a heading. And then it's a heading. Notice it takes the color of that theme that I've chosen. And see if I choose a different theme, notice that the heading changes to the color to match that theme there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my insert area. And so that's how you would add a heading, okay? Um, you have some alignment options where we can align things. We can make it center aligned, right, or justified. Left aligned, center, right, justified. Uh, we're just gonna leave this left aligned, which I recommend most of the time you want to leave your content left aligned because that's how users will typically read information, the left to right. Whenever you go from, whenever you center align stuff, it makes it more difficult for people to read. So uh, I recommend trying to leave it as left aligned. You can also use bulleted lists. So if you want to have a list, you just basically create your items and we can make them either into a numbered list or we can make it a bulleted list. And that's a good way to handle things that are obviously list type things. Okay, um, then we have a way to hyperlink things. So you can actually take and hyperlink the text. So if I want to hyperlink that text, I will go and copy the link to it. And control C to copy that. This is not a true link to this thing here, but just to show you how to use the hyperlink functionality, you select the text, you choose the link option, and you paste the link there, and then you click apply. And that's it. You get a link. And then it's the color of the link matches the color uh, from the theme that you've chosen there. So you can also take things and bold them, 
you can take things and italicize them as well, just uh, for the purposes. And so I would recommend that you, you know, make your text readable, understandable. If you think your text is important, what you never ever want to do is to take an entire text like that and make it a subheading because you want to make it bigger. Uh, a subheading is a true subheading. This is not a true subheading. This is actually uh, just normal text. And so you want to leave it as normal text. Okay. Notice that I've got on my text box some side grabby things. And I can take that and I can resize that. Notice that, I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but when I grab that, I've got some grid lines in the back that show up. And that helps me to better align my content so that uh, I can align my content nicely. So um, that's nice. Uh, so now I've got my text here and maybe uh, I wanna put something else here on the side. So let's go to images now. So that's uh, text boxes. Let's take a look at images. So let's add an image. I've got some images here that I've added in my Google Drive for my website right here. I've got these images here in my new website folder. And so I'm going to use one of those. And so the way to do this is to choose, there's several ways that we'll talk about actually, but you click on images. You never want to choose upload because again, that goes to Airy Fairyland. We have no idea where. We want to choose select. Now, uh, the very first option is by URL. Never use that ever, ever, ever. It's dangerous. It's uh, problematic. It can get you into trouble. So the bottom line is never use it. It's easy to use, but uh, I recommend your images, you need to possess them and have them in your Google Drive. And so we're gonna go right over to Google Drive. And this actually will access my entire Google Drive area. And so I'm gonna go down to my new website, which is right here. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna go into my images. And these are the images that I've put in there. I'm just going to grab that image. Notice I click it one time. It, it will select it. I can hold the control down and actually select uh, multiple images, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to select one image. Uh, and I'm going to choose, I'm going to click the select option and it will put the image right there in place. Okay. Which is uh, really kind of nice and neat. And so let's talk about images now. Notice that when I click away in my text box, I get my text box uh, menu. If I click on an image, I get a different menu that is called the image options menu. And so we're going to talk about the image options menu and what uh, those do. But notice that you've got this sidebar grabby thing. And notice that no matter what I do, I cannot skew the image, which is really cool because Google won't let you skew the image. You can resize it, it cuts off part of the image, and you just have to kind of play with it until you get that sweet spot to get the entire image in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back where it was, kind of line it up. Okay, and before I actually talk about the image options, let me just show you something else. Notice I've got my heading text here, I've got my image here. Now let's take a look at the preview button and see what happens to this on a mobile device. So when I click on this, here's the desktop view, here's the tablet view, and then notice on a mobile view, it's not side by side, but Google will automatically stack it one on top of the other. If it were side by side on a phone, it would be very difficult to see. Now, the cool thing is Google does this automatically without you having to worry about that, which is really very cool. And notice also, just by the way, this the banner image, the parallax going on there. So parallax is when you see different motions going on for, for different things. So that's just kind of an interesting thing that Google does. Let's close this preview option and go back to our page. And let's talk about the, the image uh, options that we have available. So when I click on the image, it brings up the image icons or the image uh, options. So the first option is called cropping. So when I click, notice I've got the little blue dots there, but when I click the crops option, notice that it changes to uh, corner dots. 
and you also have this slider option as well. This is really cool because we can crop an image. I can move this slider and notice it will actually zoom in on the picture and then I can actually take the picture and move it around to focus in on just the part that I want to focus in on. Let's say you know, I've got a really nice picture there, but uh, Johnny's got his finger in his nose over here. So you can crop him out and then you can click the check mark and that will then show the cropped version of the picture. So this cropping option saves you from having to crop, having to crop the image before you actually put it into your Google Drive. This next option here is to uncrop it because when you crop it, it doesn't actually destroy the picture. It's just showing the cropped portion. You can actually uncrop that picture anytime and bring it back to the original, which is pretty cool uh, because you you know when you think you crop it, maybe you, it's permanent. It's not permanent. It's just temporary. You can link the image to something by uh, putting a link here so when people click the image, it will go to a link. You can throw the image in the garbage if you want to. And then you've got some very important options here with these three vertical dots. I'm gonna click on this. So let's say you've got an image on your front page here. Instead of deleting it and reinserting another one, you can actually just replace it by just leaving the image in place and selecting another image from Drive without you having to, to delete it and reinsert. Another thing that you really need to do is to add an alt text. Uh, this is something that legally, by law, you really are supposed to do. An alternative text is a way for you to keep from being, from uh, uh, discriminating against people who have visual handicaps, and discrimination is a terrible thing. A person with a visual handicap cannot see this picture, but they can, with a screen reader, get the alt text. And so by clicking on alt text, you can put a simple phrase or sentence that explains what's in this picture. This is something that you have to do to keep from discriminating against people who are visually impaired. If the picture, if the, if the graphic is not really an important thing for content, if it's just decorative, then you can just check that box. This is a new feature, this box. But if you check the box, then you don't have to put any text there at all because it's only decorative and it's not communicating any content at all. A picture like this is definitely communicating content. This is a group of students for whatever, and you want to explain what this is very generally. One sentence really should do it. Uh, keep it short and sweet, okay? And that will uh, keep you from, you know, keep you from, uh, you know, getting in trouble from the Office of Civil Rights for uh, not being ADA uh, compliant, okay? Also in this three vertical dots, you have the ability to add a caption. You know, a caption is just a text that will show up under the picture, so I just add some words there, and I can format the text at whatever, uh, and then I click away from it, and that text will show up under the picture. And if you do, uh, if you do add a caption, then you do not uh, have to. You can actually edit it right here now and delete it, because notice that when you don't have the uh, when you click on the picture again, the caption is not caption option is not available, but you have to click down here to uh, access the caption option, and you can format the text and whatever. But if you do add a caption, then an alt text is not necessary. Okay, so that's, uh, and it's not recommended even, uh, because the caption, so long as the caption communicates the picture, what's in the picture, and by and large, most captions will do that, then that's going to be sufficient for uh, satisfying the requirements for the ADA to make sure that, that, uh, that you do that. Okay? All right, that's really it about pictures. Okay, any questions about how to deal with uh, pictures? Okay, so um, this entire vertical section here is called a section. Notice on the left, you have some options where you can, uh, you've got a color palette where you can choose to add some color to this section and the color kind of complements the theme. 
uh, you can leave it as regular. You can change it to emphasis, which makes it kind of a gray color. Or you can uh, add an image, which would really be very distracting if you want to, people to focus on your content. By adding an image, you're saying, hey, my content's really not that important. So I don't recommend doing that unless there's a very good reason for doing that. So I'm, just, I'm gonna leave this as regular. And then you have the ability to duplicate a section. So I'm gonna click that. Notice that when I do that, it actually duplicates a section for me, uh, and then, uh, which is kind of cool. So maybe I wanna just make this a heading two or whatever. Uh, notice also that I've got heading two here, that in this section, I've got these little dots here that I call grabby things. Uh, and I can actually grab that and I can actually rearrange the order of my sections so that I can just drag and drop those. You can also do all kinds of drag and drop techniques um, by just dragging your images and to different places on your screen if you want to. So you can resize your text box. I can take that image there. I can drag it down here if I want to. And again, the drag and drop options, and notice I lost my caption there, but the drag and drop options are really very powerful and very useful. So, um, but very flexible on how you can, how you can uh, do things here with uh, <coughs> Google. All right, let me just show you another thing here. If you've, you're ready to add more content down here, if I double click in this white space here, Notice it brings up a quick uh, insert menu option where I can quickly add some stuff. I can quickly add an image uh, or I can add text or I can use Google Drive. I don't recommend using that. So that saves me time from having to drag my mouse way up here and do that. I can just double click down here to do that. <clears throat> All right, let me just show you something else that you can do with the insert area on your front page. I'm gonna insert a calendar. Now, if you plan on using a calendar for your website, you want to go ahead and make the calendar in advance. If you haven't made a calendar, then don't use this calendar option. So you have to actually go to your calendar area, create your calendar for your website, and then once it's created, it's going to be available. So if it's available, when you click on calendars, it actually will go to all your calendars. I got a bunch of calendars here that are available to me, and so I'm just gonna take uh, AJ Wittenberg's school calendar and just going to, uh, double click it, I can click it or double click it. And it brings that uh, calendar in. Again, if you have a, a calendar that's specifically for your uh, classroom, you've got this really nice list of upcoming events here. You also, with this calendar, have the ability to, again, resize it, however you want to resize it. Let's just say I want to take that picture, go it away, and maybe want to take that calendar and put it up there, maybe over here, make that uh, a little bigger here, kind of line that up, and then I can move that a little further over, and this a little further over. I can take this section right here, grab, grab it, move it back up to the top, and you see how flexible things are here with, uh, with the front page, or any page for that matter. Okay, and with my calendar, if I click on my calendar, I just have a few options, but I'm gonna click on the gear option. And in my gear option, I'm going to turn the title off because I'm not really want to see the title. I'm gonna turn that off with this toggle switch. I'll leave the date showing. I don't want the navigation buttons to show, which would be the week and the month. I'm gonna just turn that off and I'll leave that alone here. Okay, and so that I've got this nice calendar. And if I were to add separately from the website, if I were to add content, add events to my calendar, they will automatically show up here. And then as the event passes, it's automatically managed here within Google Calendar so that the most, up, uh, the most uh, upcoming event is gonna show uh, first and people can scroll to see events uh, down the road. All right, so that's how you add a calendar. I'm gonna close this option and I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna add a, um, a slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click here and from Drive, 
I'm going to try to find a Google slide somewhere. And um, actually, I'm not going to do it this way because I'm going to have to search. I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm going to choose on the insert panel, I'm going to choose from the slides because that will then choose all of my slides and give me one to choose from. So I've got this Google slide that I did this summer, tips for building an attractive, effective uh, Google site. I'll click on that and choose insert, or I can just double click it and it will populate right here on the page. I can make it full screen. Notice that I can adjust the size to get a nice sweet spot that uh, gets it kind of nice and full screen there. Uh, I can, with that slider here, I can click on the gear and I've got some options here. I want it to auto start so that, I want to turn that on so that when people come to the website, it's going to automatically start rotating. And I want it to loop. When it gets to the end of the slide, it's going to start back with slide one. And then I can adjust the timing to whatever I want to. I can actually start on a different slide if I wanted to. And I click done. And then I've got my uh, Google slide here on the front page. Okay. And the cool thing about this is that this area of the website occupies a small area, but yeah, I can put a whole pile of content there. So it's really something that I would recommend that you think about because this is where you can put announcements, you can put pictures, you can put hyperlinks, you can even embed videos if you want. Okay. So uh, moving right along. That's a slider, okay? So this is kind of a basic page. It looks really nasty because we're doing this kind of quickly just for instructional purposes. All right, very quickly, let's move on to pages. I'm gonna show you how to add a new page. Okay, to add a new page, you go to the Pages tab. Here you can see the Home uh, button. You got these three options here where you can actually duplicate your home page if you want. And you can, uh, you can look at these other options. I don't recommend that at the moment. I'm going to add another page here. And I'm going to call this page Calendar. There's some advanced options we won't talk about. But notice when I click, uh, I add this page, it automatically shows up here. Notice it adds my uh, banner image. And notice it also starts my navigation. Prior to this, there was no navigation. But now that I've got two pages, I've got a navigation automatically has formed. I want to take my calendar, I'm going to grab my grabby things and stretch it out so that it will stretch out and use the entire uh, width. Uh, and then I can add content. So to add content to this page, I'm on the calendar page. I'm going to go back to my insert area and I'm going to insert uh, the same calendar uh, onto this page because this is an internal page. I don't want it to show up as a list. So I'm gonna choose this gear. And I'm gonna, again, I will probably will turn the title off. I might put a text above it, you know, saying the events calendar or Mr. Simmons calendar, or whatever. Uh, I can show the date or not show the date. I can leave the navigation button so they can go between these if they want. I'll just leave that. And then uh, here we're going to change it from agenda to month view and then click done. So the advantage of having this on an internal page is on the front page, I've got my upcoming events over the next couple of weeks or whatever. But here on this page, parents can actually navigate month by month to see what's happening in, um, and why does that not say September? Okay, show date, I'm gonna put that up there. Okay, All right. I would actually add a text up here that said monthly calendar, whatever. But this is uh, gonna show September, but they can then navigate wherever they want to to see what's happening in December, what's happening you know, in June, or when is spring break. And, and so this is a very useful thing that, that parents can, can have. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more pages here. I'm gonna add a page called, uh, uh, photos this is just for fun and notice it adds the page there and notice it actually put it before calendar and there's photos i'm going to add another page called uh, documents okay and again i would stretch that out notice it adds it in the navigation automatically okay 
Now, the cool thing about this is you see the order of these uh, pages here. If I want my calendar to actually be second, I just take calendar here and I just drag it up in between all the documents. And let's just say I want photos to be next. And so I'll just drag photos up between the two. And I have total control of the order of my navigation just by dragging over here on the right hand side. So that's pretty cool and pretty powerful. And uh, also we can we can actually make uh, drop downs if we wanted to. I can take documents if I wanted to and drag it on top of photos. If I drag it on top of photos, notice that now photos has a drop down called documents. Well, I really don't want that. Uh, I'm just showing you that you can do that if you wanted to. I'm gonna drag that back up between those two so that we have all of them showing. You can actually create a new page and use the three dots here and you can actually make it so that it doesn't show up in navigation. So in other words, the page is here, it exists, but it's not showing up as navigation, as a navigated, in your navigation scheme. So that's how you can hide a page that you may be working on, and maybe you're building this page and getting it ready to publish, then you can actually hide it from navigation while you're building it, and then whenever you're ready for it to go live, you show, click show in navigation. All right, so that's uh, kind of a useful thing here. Let's, let me show you again wh what happens on a mobile view to your navigation. We click the preview option and we take a look at it on a mobile view. Here's your navigation. I'm not sure, I don't really care too much about the fact that you really can't see that very well. And so I may choose a different theme because of that, uh, because I wanna make sure that people can see it clearly and the text kind of competes with the image itself. But notice on a mobile phone, it will automatically create hamburger icons for your navigation. You don't have to do anything at all. That's an automatic feature that uh, that Google Sites will do. All right, two more things I want to show you, and then we're going to wrap things up here very quickly. So I want to show you a way to uh, add photos to a page. So um, one way to add like a photo gallery to a page is on the insert area. Actually, I'm gonna come down here and just double click to, shoot, to show you the quick insert. I'll double click here and we're gonna choose from drive. And I'm gonna to go to my website or my new website here, open it up. Now, I want to actually put a folder into the page here. And so this is the folder. So I don't want to double click because that will open the folder. I want to just click one time, single click, because I don't want to open the folder. I want to select the folder. So I'm going to click it. Notice that I click it, it selects it, and I can choose insert, and it will insert that folder from my Google Drive that has all those pictures right here this folder right here where I've got all these pictures, I've just embedded that folder into this page, okay? Now, the cool thing about that is that once I embed a folder into the page, I don't have to manage this on the page. I can just go to my Google Drive, I can delete pictures, I can add pictures, I can change pictures, and they will automatically show up on the website. That's kind of a, cool time-saving feature. I don't like the way this looks. So we can click the gear and change this from a list view to a grid view, which is a little more visually appealing. So you, see, you have kind of a thumbnail of the pictures. And of course you can make it, uh, stretch it down uh, so that visitors don't have a scroll bar. And so this is a nice way to do pictures. Again, it is once you've embedded it into the page and maybe you want to add more pictures later, you come back to your drive and add the pictures and they'll automatically show up on the website. Okay. This is really a good way to like maybe to do field trips, for example, or to do activities. And maybe you might you would have a folder called images. And then in that images folder, you would have a folder called Rupert Mountain Science Fair Field Trip. Or another folder that would be like field day activity or whatever. And that way each folder can then be like a separate uh, photo gallery that you can embed on the, on the page. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, let's go and do the same thing with documents. 
you may have a group of documents you want to make those documents available on the page the same way you can insert uh, in the same way I did images we can double click and choose from drive and we can go and remember the last place I went to which is really cool and we can take that this folder here of documents and I want to just click it one time to, to select it and choose insert and then it will insert these documents onto the page which is uh, pretty cool notice I've got different documents I've got a PDF I've got a Google Doc I got a Word Doc and I got a Google slide and a PowerPoint uh, notice if I come back to the gear and change it from list view to grid view that it creates a thumbnail which is really cool a thumbnail of page one of whatever the item is a thumbnail of page one of the PDF the Word document the PowerPoint the Google slide which I don't see here for some reason uh, but it creates page one of that document and uh, so that's again something that's very useful one thing to keep in mind is that you cannot control the order of these actually you can control the order but you have to manipulate it because the order of these is alphabetical in the folder and so if you come up with a naming convention that relates to an alphabetical arrangement you can kind of somewhat control the order of that all right the last thing we'll mention here we're going to wrap it up here um, for today is once you have created your website then you want to publish your website so that it is public and publicly available and so to publish your website you want to uh, click the publish button at the top right notice this publish button is a solid button and whenever you have a brand new website that's how the publish button will look once we click publish for the first time the button will change afterward so that it looks slightly different and we'll talk about that so I'm going to go ahead and click publish now when you click publish you have this option here uh, you have a field where you have a web address okay and in this field you want to put a unique text that will be part of your web address will be part of the URL of your address. What it's gonna, what's, what your web address will be is this address here with a forward slash followed by whatever text you put here. And whatever you text you put here has to be unique so that it's not used by anybody else in Greenville County Schools. And so it's probably wise to use your username but I've already used that, uh, and so I can't use that for this website because I've already created a website with that username. And so you need to come up with something different that somebody else has not already taken. So we'll do is available, okay? And so I can use that. And this is going to be. I don't recommend using that by the way, but because that might, you know, people might uh, think. Uh, but this becomes the address for your new site okay so you can manage this uh, you typically won't have to do that if you put your site in a folder like we did earlier and then you've got a checkbox here I don't recommend checking that checkbox because you typically want to be discoverable if people are doing a Google search there are some situations where people have like personal issues, very difficult personal issues where for some reason they don't want to be discoverable on Google and it's a privacy issue and that's a rare situation, but it does exist. I think by and large, most people are gonna leave that unchecked, okay? And then whenever you click publish, it's publishing the site and the site will then be publicly available for everybody. Notice that the publish button has changed appearance a little bit. Now it has a drop down menu where you can go back uh, in this drop down menu. You can do several things. You can go to the publish settings, which takes you, takes you right back to that previous screen. You can view the publish site. And this is gonna take me to this earth science page that I'm currently on. And it'll actually open it up 
to the live page. You can see the address. It's a live page on the internet that is available, okay? And so, again, I don't like the difficulty, difficult contrast, and I would actually change that. I'm gonna close this and I'm back at my website. You can also unpublish your site. You really, really never want to do that uh, unless you've been terribly hacked or whatever. Uh, and you can't figure out what the problem is, then unpublishing it will, will make it to totally unavailable to the public. Okay, once you publish the uh, site, then this link option will work, and you can go to your home page by clicking home, which I guess this is the home page. And once you click this link, it'll actually copy it. Uh, you can copy the link, and it copies to the clipboard, and you can email it to the person who manages your website so that they can put your link onto the school's website. Let me mention one last thing and then we're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna click the stop button on the record. Let's just say, for example, you have your website and it's not in this folder. So what you could do is, um, let's just say your website somewhere else. Let's pretend that maybe this is your website. It's in a different folder, okay, right here. So you've already made this website, maybe it's in your drive itself somewhere. Basically, you can take that website and just drag it into a folder that you've created that has all of the subfolders and all of the organization that you would like to have. And so it's very easy to come into a situation where you've got a folder organizational structure that's gonna be suitable for uh, your website. And so uh, that I wanted to share that with you. All right, we are basically done. So thank you for your attention.